Good morning, class. I wish that I could join you, but unfortunately I'm not able to because of self-isolation. However, what we are going to be examining is how Newfoundland would join Confederation. Yes, it's lesson one of our fourth mini-unit, post-1918 Canadian identities. Our World War I lesson was kind of the introduction to that. So in New with Newfoundland, they were a British colony and did not join Canada. Uh, there had been talks about having Newfoundland join Canada, but they did not. So in 1907, though, they got Dominion status. So they essentially became a partially independent country, just like Canada was. And just like Canada, Newfoundland got pulled into the First World War. This did not go well for them. They had to spend a lot of money on participating. Uh, many of their uh, young men of prime age were wiped out. Uh, with the 1st Newfoundland Regiment, thousands actually died in that group. Uh, it was really tragic. They were part of one of the first battles of Ypres, where they were faced with poison gas. Uh, so this was really devastating. So by the time World War I was finished, Newfoundland was pretty much broke. Uh, and uh, by 1927... No, hold up, hold up, no, 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 no. 1934, uh, they had to uh, basically go back to direct rule under the British. So they lost responsible government, and now they were under the rule of a British commission. Sorry, 1927 was actually when there was, uh, the Labrador Boundary Commission was deciding should Labrador belong to Quebec or Newfoundland. So if you don't remember, Labrador is that part of the province of Newfoundland and Labrador that is on the Canadian mainland. And so 1927, they decided it should go to Newfoundland. Uh, in Quebec, they were very unhappy, but they still had poutine, so I guess they didn't have too much to complain about. So anyway, 1934, now Newfoundland, this is very humiliating. They lose what independence they had. Not only are they not even voting for their own uh, officials anymore, but they're under this British commission. However... Where World War I was terrible for Newfoundland, World War II proved to be better. Uh, they didn't have quite such devastating human losses, uh, and they actually made quite a bit of money from shipbuilding. So this turned out to be quite uh, good for them. They were in a much better position uh, financially at the end of that war. Uh, now, Canada actually had the third largest navy of any allied country by the end of the war. So I would, uh, I would imagine that would be after, uh, I don't know if that includes the Soviet Union. I learned this from a game of Trivial Pursuit, actually, so I'd have to verify it elsewhere. But uh, the United States and uh, the United Kingdom, I imagine, would be the two that have uh, higher. I mean, after that and the Soviet Union, you really didn't have many other powerful allied countries. Most of them had been uh, taken over. So anyway, the war ended, World War II ended, and Newfoundland had lots of money. They were ready to make it rain, uh, and they thought, hey, we, now that we're wealthy again, we should rule ourselves. And so they had a vote, and the first vote, so the, ultimately the, the results of this were decided in 1949, and let me just check the handy-dandy PowerPoint. I've updated it on D2L now to have music. So the Newfoundland National Convention uh, was uh, yeah, basically concluded in 1949, and they decided to, they had, for the first round, they had 44% with the top choice voted to return to responsible government, meaning Newfoundland would continue to be a dominion. They would run themselves, just like they had uh, before they went broke uh, from World War I. The second most popular option at about 42% was to join Canada. Let me just make sure I'm getting the numbers right here for you. Otherwise, I'll have to resign in disgrace. Sorry. No, no, no. 45% responsible government, if you're rounding up, and 41% confederation with Canada. Only 14% wanted to continue the British rule by commission. So actually, one of the options they didn't have, even though there was some support for it, was joining the United States. Uh, basically, the British said, no, we're not, uh, not going to give this land to the United States. That would not, uh, that would not be very nice. So uh, no option got 50%, so they did a runoff. They said, okay, it's either Confederation, you join Canada, or you can return to re responsible government. And so of those people who had originally voted to, re to stay with British rule, uh, most of them switched to Confederation. They said, let's be part of Canada. So this was quite controversial. The final vote was about 52 to 48 
percent in favor of joining Canada. So a lot of people in Newfoundland wanted to be their own country, but uh, ultimately the winning option was advocated for by Joey Smallwood. Yeah, you'll see in the PowerPoint, Joey Smallwood would end up being the first premier of Newfoundland, and he would be in there for quite a long time, from 1949 all the way to 1972. So what happened in Newfoundland after this? Did it turn out for them? Uh, well, first off, this vote was very divisive. Uh, that a lot of it was along uh, Catholic Protestant lines. So actually the Catholic Archdiocese, they were, were very much against Confederation. Uh, and uh, this really got a reaction. The Protestants uh, said, oh yeah, then we're going to be in favor of it. Uh, and uh, so this province, under, under Joey Smallwood, uh, he was really successful in modernizing Newfoundland. So they built a lot of modern roads, education, and social programs to improve the quality of life. His whole argument was that Newfoundlanders should enjoy the same quality of life as Canadians. And one of the big uh, motivations for people to vote uh, for Confederation, in addition to just ticking off the Catholic Church, was that Canada had offered them a lot of money. They said, yeah, we're going to help you do these things. Uh, however, uh, Joey Smallwood was criticized for being very harsh in his use of power. Some thought that he was uh, perhaps somewhat corrupt. Uh, and they also felt that as much as the social programs were built, that he was not successful in building a strong economy, building independent industries. So Newfoundland, yeah, they had shipbuilding and they had fish, but it was it was definitely a have-not province, meaning that for the most part it relied on support from wealthier Canadian provinces to sustain that quality of life. Now, Newfoundland has had some ups and downs as well. So another down was that the cod fish industry, they had a moratorium on it. There had been so much overfishing that they said that we have to pause uh, the fishing. Otherwise, there will just be no cod left. Uh, and so in the last decade, actually, the cod numbers went up again. But a few years ago, 2018, they did actually uh, reduce the amount that's allowed to be fished once again, just because those numbers have been going down. Uh, they probably should have given it a little bit longer. But as you can imagine, people were impatient to make a living. And, and codfish is so delicious. Mm, it's just so flaky. It's like, why would you not want to eat it? So one of the good things that happened in Newfoundland, for their economy anyway, was they had an oil boom in the early 21st century. So in the first decade, the aughts, if you will, so from like 2000 to 2010. However, as you can see, just like with Alberta, the oil and gas industry has not been as strong recently, and so that has affected Newfoundland. But for a short time, they actually were considered a have province. They were actually uh, contributing more money to Confederation uh, than the average province. And so 2001, they're not actually Newfoundland anymore. In 2001, they changed their name to Newfoundland and Labrador. So uh, there are some who still feel that, you know, they're, they're a Newfoundlander first, perhaps, above, uh, above Canadian. But uh, definitely it's an integral, unique uh, cultural region of Canada. And I, I tragically, to this point, have not been there. But I would just love to go because from what I've heard from people who've been, it's, uh, it's really unique and a lot of fun. Maybe not so much in the winter, though. Okay, uh, so you'll also hear, actually, the uh, if, you, if you download the PowerPoint and listen to the intro music, uh, there is uh, music by the Great Big Sea, a traditional folk song called Donkey Riding. That's a lot of fun. Uh, I'd encourage you to actually check out the whole song, and the live version is, is really great. So it kind of shows you some of that Newfoundland spirit. Uh, so today, for our activity, you are going to get into the heat of the debate. So with Newfoundland, they had to debate whether they should stay in uh, as an independent dominion uh, or stick with British rule or join the wider body of Canada. And so similarly, in our world, we have a debate about uh, whether we should be uh, connected with the rest of the globe, the rest of the world, or whether we should look inward. Uh, and in recent years, there have been a lot of people saying, oh no, look at all these problems. Look at, uh, you know, jobs that are going elsewhere or look at maybe the spread of disease. However, also consider all the things we enjoy, like the fact you can get a lot of cheap goods, uh, the fact that we enjoy all kinds of culture, like music, movies, food from all over the world, uh, right in our own backyard. 
uh, a lot of positives too that our li uh, lives have because of this global nature. Should we cooperate with other countries? Is this a way to achieve world peace or by interacting with other countries do we just have conflict? So I want you to come up with your own plan. Should Canada uh, look inward, keep to ourselves, do things just by ourselves our own way? Or should we interact more with the rest of the world by trading, by maybe helping countries that are less fortunate, by collaborating, or is there too much to risk? Is the cost too great? So take some time to prepare, maybe about seven minutes uh, with a couple people around you, and then we're going to have a class debate. But I won't be there for it, so I'm excited to hear all about it. Take care and have fun with the debate. Bye-bye.